Okay, so let's see if you can answer this math question correctly. And the question is, is this triangle a right triangle? Now, just in case you don't know, a right triangle is a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees. And when you have an actual right triangle, you'll see this little like box or square in the corner of that triangle that indicates that is the 90 degree angle. So here I don't have that because we don't know whether or not this is a right triangle. But uh, what we have here is the sides, the lengths of the triangle. So this side right here is six feet, three inches. This side right here is four feet, nine inches. And this side right here is three feet, six inches. Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to answer this question. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help with mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is no, this is not a right triangle. All right, now if you got this right, we have to give you a happy face and an A+. Now for those of you that just guessed, because the answer here is either yes or no, and if you are a math student and you have a question well, uh, where you're not going to get penalized for guessing, always, always, always at least take a guess. That is a smart thing to do. But if you said, this is not a right triangle because uh, you checked it using the Pythagorean theorem. Well, I got to give you your 100% and multiple stars because that is exactly right. So great job. Now, those of you out there that don't even know what I'm talking about, the Pythagorean theorem, well, this is going to be a great little introduction to something that is extremely important in all levels of mathematics, especially geometry. All right, so when it comes to triangles, there is a lot to know. And uh, there's different types of triangles, but one of the most important types of triangles in all of geometry is right triangles. Again, triangles that have this 90 degree angle in one of their corners. This is actually the kind of the, uh, the basis of trigonometry. Okay, so you really got to understand a lot about right triangles. And of course, this is the question, hey, is this triangle a right triangle? So what do we need to do in order to answer this question? Well, we're going to need a theorem, which is kind of like a formula. And the name of that theorem is called the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I didn't write it down. I should have actually probably wrote down uh, the actual theorem here. Now, of course, I, I am not the best speller. When it comes to math, you know, that's my thing. But when it comes to spelling, you know, I'm not that great. That's why I always use spell check. But uh, anyways, the Pythagorean theorem, uh, this is something that you need to know. Now, this word right here, theorem, okay, is just a fancy math word. Effectively, you kind of think of it as a formula, right? It's a law or a property. There's kind of a technical definition of a theorem, but you don't need to know that. You just need to know that this thing has been proven. Now, what is this uh, Pythagorean theorem? What are we talking about? Well, here it is right here. This is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. But what does this mean? Well, if you have a right triangle, okay, i.e. one of the angles is 90 degrees, then this relationship between the sides is always true. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of define uh, the sides here of a right triangle. And let's start with the, probably the most important side that you gotta really understand. And that is the longest side of this triangle. And it's always opposite of where the 90 degrees is this side right here, the longest side. And of course you can recognize it because it looks like the longest side, but it's again, opposite of the 90 degrees. This is called the hypotenuse and it will always be the variable C in the Pythagorean theorem. So again, this side right here, this C variable represents the longest side. Now that uh, is extremely important because these other variables here, A and B, represent the sides of the smaller sides, the shortest and the medium side of this triangle. And this uh, uh, could be A, this could be A, this could be B. In other words, it's not important 
what sides we designate A or B, but it's absolutely critical that we always label C as the uh, hypotenuse or the longest side of that right triangle. Okay, so here is um, the Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. If we square the shorter side, we add it to the square of the medium side, that's gonna be, and we add these up, that's gonna be equal to the square of the longest side or the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example, an easy example, and then of course we'll get to our actual problem. Okay, so let's take this triangle right here. This is an actual right triangle, three, four, five, and it's a, a, a right triangle because we have this notation, but we can check this using the Pythagorean theorem. So here is the Pythagorean theorem. Again, this only applies to right triangles. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So let's start with the C. This is our longest side, so five is going to be our C. So we're gonna plug in five for C. Okay, so C, what is C? Well, it's gonna be five. Okay, what's A and B? Well, it's not really important. Uh, this could be A right here, and this could be B, or it could be vice versa because it's not going to really affect our answer. Again, the only thing that's critical here is that we have the hypotenuse correct. Okay, so here we have 3 squared, which is A squared, plus B squared, which is going to be 4 squared. So let's go ahead and do the math here. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, or 16. And 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. And you can see here, 9 plus 16 is 25, so 25 is equal to 25. Okay, so that's how you can kind of verify that these lengths here are um, at the actual correct lengths of a right triangle. You'll always get the left-hand side equal in value to the right-hand side. Okay, so if you understand this, then, well, you should be able to solve this problem. There is a little bit of a twist. Of course, I'm going to get to that in just one second. But first, I'm going to get to this, and that is I need your help to grow my YouTube channel. I wouldn't stop this lovely video if I didn't need your support. So if you think you're getting some little value from here, uh, from this video, you know, the easiest way to kind of show, uh, show support for my channel, and really what you're doing is helping me reach other people that need assistance in, math, 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 in mathematics, excuse me, is <laughs> just to hit that subscribe button. That's all I ask, and if you do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, I have well over 2,000 plus math videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you're studying trigonometry, algebra, basic math, you can scour through all these videos on my channel. I made them for you. Now let's get back to this problem, and here it is, right? So now we have an understanding of the Pythagorean theorem, but there's a little bit of a twist here, and it has to do with the units of measure, units of measure, because we're dealing with feet and inches, okay? Feet and inches. We need to kind of get this in one unit. So it can either be all inches or all feet, but we can't really uh, operate um, or use the Pythagorean theorem until we fix up these units of measure. So we're gonna to have to do that first. So let's go ahead and co start converting these units. All right, so here is our length. So C is the longest side, so that's six feet, three inches, and then here are sides A and B. This is the sh uh, shorter side, so we have three feet, six inches. So we, oh, well, I should just kind of say here, I don't wanna make any assumptions. Uh, hopefully you know that in one foot, okay, there are 12 inches, right? So if I have three feet, six inches, and there's 12 inches in one foot, well, you know, that's going to be 3.5 feet, all right? Because six out of 12 is one half or 0.5. So let's use decimals here just to make our life easy. And uh, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, feel free to use a calculator, okay? So 3.5 feet is uh, equivalent to three feet and six inches. So again, now here we only have feet and that's what we want to do. Okay, now if you think you know how to convert the rest of these units, this would be a good little uh, kind of little mini pop quiz here. See if you can convert four feet nine uh, inches into only feet and then six feet three inches into only feet. Now, of course, I did the easy one here, three feet six inches. So if you want to go and try that, that would be a great little um, check to see if you know how to convert basic units of measure. And if you don't know how to do that, well, this is important stuff. 
I'll give you a couple of suggestions by the time, you know, by, uh, when I finish this video on how you can learn all this. But let's go down here and actually do the math. Okay, so let's um, focus in on the inches part, okay? So let me just kind of go back here. So I have three feet. What I wanted to do was determine how many feet or what, uh, how can we express in six inches as feet? So six inches is equivalent to 0.5 feet. So what we want to do here is figure out how many uh, feet is nine inches and how many feet are uh, three inches. Of course, that's going to be less than one foot. So let's go ahead and actually do that right now. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. So here is nine inches, and how can I convert this to feet? Well, what we need to do is use a conversion factor. Okay, so we know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay, now I can also say 12 inches is equal to one uh, foot. Okay, so these are technically both correct, okay, as conversion factors. And when you're converting from one a unit of measure to another, you want to use a conversion factor. In other words, something that equivalates uh, both um, uh, units, right? The ones that you're you're trying to get rid of into the and the unit that you're trying to go to. Now, the the reason why I have to use uh, one foot over 12 inches and not 12 inches over one uh, foot is because when we multiply right here, and this is really really important, when I multiply this nine inches over one, okay, you got to think. In terms of fractions, look at the units of measure. I have inches here in the numerator, and I have inches down here in the denominator. I want to get rid of inches. Now, if I had inches up in the numerator, inches times uh, inches, I would have inches times inches, which is inches squared. Okay? I don't want inches. I want the, uh, the inches to kind of go away. So they'll go away because I could cross-cancel these inches. Remember, just like when you're working, when you're working, excuse, excuse me, with, with regular fractions, and uh, you have like factors between the numerator and denominator, you just simply cross cancel. So you have to focus on units of measure. You're like, okay, inches are down here, inches are here. That's exactly what I want. I get rid of the inches, and I'm left with feet. Okay. So if you're ever confused about, are you using the right conversion factor? Like in other words, if I'm using 12 inches over one foot, I would end up with inches squared over feet. Okay, because inches times inches, inches squared over feet, that's not helping me out. If I do it this way, okay, let's kind of look at this one more time. I have inches here, I have inches down here over feet. The inches are going to go away, I'm left with feet. All right, so not a trivial little detail because a lot of students, a lot of people make this error. All right, now, now that we have this uh, the correct uh, conversion factor, all we need to do is actually do the math. So it's going to be 9 times 1. Hopefully you know how to multiply fractions. So 9 times 1 is 9. 1 times 12 is 12. And then I could just simply reduce this fraction to 3 fourths. Or I could just get my calculator and say, okay, 9 divided by 12, that's going to be the decimal 0.75. Okay, so instead of, you know, you, you got your calculator handy, no big deal. So just turn this thing into a decimal. But anyways, if you didn't have a calculator, you could just say, all right, I'll reduce this down to 3 fourths. But then yeah, hopefully you uh, realize that it is the decimal equivalent of 0.75. Okay, so let's do the same thing here with this 3 inches. We'll multiply 3 inches by 1 foot over 12 inches. So the inches are going to go away. So it's going to be 3 times 1, which of course is 3 over 12. 1 times 12 is 12. So 3 over 12 is the fraction 1 fourth, which is the decimal 0.25. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So our units of measure now, three feet, uh, six inches. Now you could, if you were a little bit confused on how I explained this, you could do the same thing and uh, take that six uh, inches and multiply it by um, our conversion factor and do the same work. But I think this one is pretty easy to understand. So A, that length is 3.5 feet. B, remember now we only have feet, is our four feet, nine inches is equivalent to 4.75 feet, okay, we don't have uh, inches here, 6 feet 3 inches is equivalent to 6.25 feet. Okay, so these are the units that we're going to use. Remember, we're going to uh, need to work in one unit of measure, and you could check this uh, work uh, by using inches. And if you wanted to do that, I think that is the, you know, the longer way. What we would have to do is uh, turn the feet into inches, so that would be 3 times 12, because there's 12 inches in one foot, so then you got 36 inches, and you would add to the six inches. You could do the same. You could do it that way as well. Okay, so if you used inches, that's perfectly fine because the Pythagorean theorem doesn't care as long as you're in one unit of measure. 
Okay, so here is our triangle, and here is the measures now in uh, uh, feet. So this longest side is the one that we need to care about, right? That's the hypotenuse, so this is always C, 6.25 feet. And this could be A or B, or this could be B or A. It doesn't make a difference. So let's go and plug all this stuff and do the number crunching. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so as I indicated, C has to be that 6.25. So I'll plug in 6.25, and then, of course, we're going to square it. That's C squared. And then here we'll call 4.75A, and then for B we'll call that 3.5. If you called A 3.5 and 4.75B, that's perfectly fine as well. Again, the only thing that matters is that hypotenuse. Okay, so 4.75 squared. I'm going to round off a bit here. Uh, we have 22.56, 3.5 squared. Of course, you can just go into your calculator. 3.5 times 3.5 is 12.25. And then 6.25 squared is uh, 39.06. Again, that would be 6.25 times itself. And now let's go ahead and add these two up right here. 22.56 plus 12.25 gets us around 34.81. I did round off a bit here, just kind of uh, estimated a little bit. But you can see 34.81 is pretty, for, uh, pretty far away from 39. 0 0.06. So this is not a right triangle. Okay. Now, uh, if you were like, oh, wow, I never really, uh, you know, learned uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Well, then here, you know, basically this is it. And this Pythagorean theorem shows up in all levels of math. It shows up in basic algebra. It shows up in uh, geometry. It shows up in more advanced algebra, it shows up in trigonometry, it shows up in pre-calculus, it shows up in calculus. It is a critical formula for you to understand. Now, if you need to learn more about geometry and triangles, let me give you a couple of suggestions. Uh, now, I'm gonna leave links to these courses in the description. One, you'll find my full geometry course. That's a full one year course that's designed mostly for you know, like let's say high school level students that need to you know learn a full one year geometry course so if you're interested if you're interested in that you can find you know that course again in the description now if you just need some basic assistance with some basic geometry i got uh, two suggestions for you one check out my pre-algebra course i teach uh, basic geometry in there but some of you may not even be students and if you're not students and you still are interested in learning mathematics, check out my new course, Math Skills Rebuilder. I teach you basic math, algebra, geometry, basic trigonometry, and even some probability and statistics. So that course is designed for those students or those people that are not students but just want to rebuild or maybe learn math right for the first time in their life. Okay, so hopefully this video was interesting. And if it helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.